According to most scholars, the Dakshina Murti Stotram was composed about 1200 years ago by Shankaracharya. Among all the hymns, texts, and commentaries written by Shankara, this particular work is unique, like a precious gem, because it presents some of the most profound teachings of Advaita Vedanta in delightful verses, verses filled with beautiful expressions and striking metaphors. Because of its complex subject matter, this hymn can be quite difficult to understand simply by reading it or reciting it. So, this presentation is intended to make Shankara's brilliant composition easier to appreciate. As you may know, Dakshinamurti is Shiva in the form of a guru, a teacher of spiritual wisdom. A traditional story says that Shiva once appeared as a youthful guru sitting at the foot of a banyan tree, surrounded by elderly sages who were eager to be taught by him. Yet Dakshinamurti remained completely silent. His silence signifies the fact that supreme truth, knowledge of Brahman, lies beyond all words and thoughts. So, instead of speaking, Dakshinamurti taught the sages by using a special hand gesture called chin mudra. The chin mudra is a symbol that represents the ultimate teaching of Advaita Vedanta, tat tvam asi, that thou art. These four fingers represent you as an individual person, while the thumb represents Brahman, the infinite consciousness that's the underlying reality because of which everything exists. The separation between these four fingers and thumb represents the state of ignorance, the state in which you consider yourself to be separate and different from Brahman. These three fingers represent your body, mind, and senses, and the index finger represents pure consciousness, atma, your essential nature. The chin mudra shows that atma, your true self, must first be distinguished from your body, mind, and senses. Only then can you discover that your consciousness is utterly non-separate from Brahman, the reality of all. You can see the Chin Mudra in Dakshinamurti's lower right hand. In his lower left hand, he holds a palm-leaf manuscript that represents the Vedic scriptures, the source of spiritual wisdom. Most of the other iconography here is similar to other representations of Shiva. For example, he holds a damaru, drum, in his upper right hand and fire in his upper left hand, symbolizing his power to create and destroy the universe. His right foot rests on apasmara, a demon who represents ignorance. There's much more symbolism here, but this much is enough for our discussion. The word Dakshina means south, and Murti means form. So, Dakshina Murti literally means a form of Shiva that faces south. Symbolically, south represents death, ignorance, and all that's undesirable. North, on the other hand, represents immortality, liberation, and all that's auspicious. It's appropriate that Dakshinamurti's disciples sit facing him, facing north, towards liberation, moksha, while Dakshinamurti himself boldly faces south, having transcended death and ignorance.
It's highly unusual for the main deity inside a temple to face south. Usually, it faces east. But Dakshinamurti is rarely the main deity of a temple, and instead is often found in a secondary shrine. Many Shiva temples, especially in South India, have a Shiva Linga as the main deity. The Linga is established in the temple's Garbhagraha, the sacred chamber, which opens to the east. Worshippers often perform pradakshina, circumambulating the main deity, by walking around a corridor that encircles the Garbhagraha. On the outer wall of the Garbhagraha, the shrines of several other deities are located. On the south-facing wall, the shrine of Dakshinamurti is found. Now we're ready for the Dakshinamurti Stotram. The hymn consists of just ten verses, but it's traditionally preceded by five dhyana shlokas, verses meant for meditation. These verses describe Dakshinamurti using the imagery and symbolism we've just discussed. Here's a depiction of Shankaracharya himself reciting the meditation verses and the hymn. Mauna Vyakya Prakatita Parabrahmatatvam Yuvanam. In perfect silence, a young teacher imparts knowledge of Brahman. Varshishtante Vasadrishiganair Avritam Brahmanishtaihi. Two elderly sages, established in truth, sitting around him. Acharendram Karakalita Chinmudramananda Rupam. The greatest of teachers, an embodiment of bliss, whose gesture bestows wisdom. Swatma Ramam Mudita Vadanam Dakshinamurti Mide. Always smiling, being absorbed in the self, I worship him, Dakshinamurti. Vatavita Pi Samipe Bhumi Bhage Nishannam. Sitting on the ground at the foot of a banyan tree. Sakala muni jananam jnana datara marat. Bestowing wisdom upon the sages sitting before him. Tribhuvana guru misham dakshina murti devam. Guru of the three worlds, Lord dakshina murti. Janana marana dukkha cheda daksham namami. Removing the suffering of birth and death. To him I bow. Chitram Bhattata Ror Mule Vridha Shishya Guror Yuva How amazing! At the foot of a banyan tree sits a young guru with elderly disciples. Gurostu Maunam Vyakyanam Sishyastu Chinna Samshayaha In perfect silence, the guru removes the doubts of his disciples. Nidhaye sarva vidyanam bhishaje bhavaroginam. Precious treasure of wisdom, medicine for the illness of worldly suffering. Gurave sarva lokanam dakshinamurtaye namaha. Guru of all worlds, to him, Dakshinamurti, salutations. Om Namah Pranavartaya Shuddha Jnaneka Murtaye Salutations to Him, the meaning of Om, the embodiment of pure wisdom. Nirmalaya Prashantaya Dakshinamurtaye Namaha To Dakshinamurti, the taintless abode of perfect peace, salutations. After these meditation verses, we can turn to the Dakshinamurti Stotram itself. Each of its ten verses will be much easier to understand with a brief introduction. In the first verse, Shankara compares the entire universe to the imaginary world you experience each night 
in your dreams. When you dream, everything you experience arises inside your mind, yet it seems to be outside of you. Shankara says that the same is true about the world you experience when you're awake. Vishwam darpana drishyamana nagari tulyam nijandar gatam. Like a city reflected in a mirror, the world is within you. Pashyanatmani mayaya bahurivo bhutam yata nidraya. Arising in consciousness, like a dream, but appearing outside due to maya. Yasakshat kurute prabhoda samaye swatmanam evadvayam. To him who bestows enlightenment by revealing all as the non-dual self. Tasmai shri guru murtaye nama idam shri dakshina murtaye. To dakshina murti, God in the form of guru, salutations. After waking up from a dream, you realize that the world you experienced then wasn't real. It was a projection on your own consciousness. In the same way, after waking up from the dream of ignorance, that is, after you become enlightened, you'll realize that the world you experience all around you is also a projection. It's a projection on non-dual Brahman, which you'll understand as being identical to your true self, Atma. Near the end of this verse are the words Shri Guru Murtaye Nama, salutations to him in the form of Guru. This expression not only refers to Dakshinamurti, but it also refers to your own guru. Here, Shankara invites you to meditate on your guru as being a form or embodiment of Dakshinamurti. Now, regarding the world you experience, where did it come from? How did it arise? In the Hindu worldview, the universe is cyclic. It goes through periods of manifestation and dissolution. After undergoing dissolution, it remains in an unmanifest state until the next cycle of creation begins. Then, like a sprout emerging from a seed, the universe becomes manifest once again. At first, the world was undifferentiated, like a sprout inside a seed. Then it became differentiated into time and space, projected by Maya. Maya viva vrijrumba yetyapi mahayogi vayasvechaya. To him who created the world at will, like a magician or a powerful yogi. Tasmai shri guru murta ye nama idam shri dakshina murta ye. To dakshina murti, God in the form of guru, salutations. Here, Shankara compares Dakshinamurti to a magician. Magicians have the skill to make something like a rabbit or bird suddenly appear before your eyes. So too, Dakshinamurti has the skill or power to make the entire universe appear. That creative power wielded by Dakshinamurti is the power of Maya. In the next verse, Shankara explains that Dakshinamurti himself is Brahman, the underlying substratum or fabric of existence upon which the entire universe is projected. 
ಯಸ್ಪುರಣ ಸದಾತ್ಮಕಮಸತ್ಕಲ್ಪಾಕಂ ಭಾಸತೆ ಹಿಸ್ ಓನ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಜೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ತಮಸೀತಿ ವೇದ ವಚ ಸಾಯೋ ಬೋಧಯತ್ಯಾಶ್ರಿತ ವಿತ್ ದ ವೇರಿಕ್ ದಿಕ್ತಂ ಥತ್ ತ್ವಂ ಅಸಿ ಹಿ ಎಂಪಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ಸ್ ಯತ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕರಣಾತ್ಭವೇನ್ನ ಪುನರಾವೃತ್ತಿರ್ಭವಾಂಭೋ ನಿಧೌ ಥ್ರೂ ಹುಚ್ ದೇ ನೆವರ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಓಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಸ್ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಮೂರ್ತ ನಮ ಇದಂ ಶ್ರೀದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ಟು ಹಿಂ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿ ಗಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಗುರು ಸ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ಲೈಟನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ತ್ವಂ ಯುರ್ ಅಸೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಂಡಮೆಂಟಲಿ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಕಲ್ ಟು ಥಟ್ ಟು ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮನ್ the fabric of existence on which the universe is projected that fabric of existence is not inert it's conscious awareful as brahman dakshina murti not only bestows existence on everything but also bestows sentiency on all living creatures being the infinite consciousness that pervades the universe that very consciousness dwells in us all it looks out through our eyes it hears what comes in through our ears it illumines all our perceptions and in this way it reveals the world around us in the next verse shankara compares that consciousness to a lamp inside a pot shining out through many holes that represent our five senses nana chitra gadodara sthita mahadeepa prabha bhaswaram like a lamp inside a pot shining out through many holes jnanam yasya tu chakshuradikarana dwara bahispandate it is his consciousness that shines out through the sense organs janami titame va bhanta manubadhye tat samastam jagat revealing everything in the world as i know it tasmai shri guru murtaye nama idam shri dakshina murtaye to him dakshina murti god in the form of guru salutations you experience the world around you as well as everything that happens in your mind because fundamentally you are a conscious being consciousness is your true essential nature yet most people don't think of themselves in this way instead they identify themselves with their bodies and minds and as a result they consider themselves to be male female young old happy sad and so on in the next verse shankara says that all such false identification is the result of ignorance deham pranam apindriyanya pichalam buddhim shashunyam viduhu i am the body life force senses intellect or nothingness thus they believe stri bala anda jadopamas tvaham iti bhranta vrisham vadinah being completely deluded like the weak childish blind or dull maya shakti vilasa kalpita mahavyamoha samharine to him who removes all this delusion projected by the power of maya tasmai shri guru murtaye nama idam shri dakshina murtaye to dakshina murti god in the form of guru salutations 
This false identification is the root cause of all suffering. Dakshinamurti, in the form of your own teacher, has the ability to completely remove that false identification. Then you'll know very clearly that your true nature as pure consciousness is utterly unaffected by the problems of your body and mind. That pure consciousness is the divinity within you. It's the ever-present source of peace, joy, and contentment. As the light of awareness, it never ceases to shine within you, even during deep sleep. When the sun is covered by clouds or an eclipse, it continues to shine. So, too, your consciousness shines continually, even during dreamless sleep as Shankara explains in the next verse. Rahu grasta divakarendu sadrusho maya samachadanat Like the sun or moon covered during an eclipse, due to the power of maya, sanmatra karanopa samharanato yo bhut sushupta fuman Your mind and senses are withdrawn during deep sleep. Yet consciousness remains. Pragasvapsamidi prapoda samayes yapratya bignayate. And after waking up is recognized as I slept. Tasmai Shri Guru Murtaye Nama Idam Shri Dakshinamurtaye. To him, Dakshinamurti, God in the form of Guru, salutations. The consciousness that shines even when you're asleep is present in every stage of life, giving continuity to your existence. Because it's always present, it might seem quite ordinary to you. But, as Shankara explains in the next verse, consciousness is anything but ordinary. It's the divinity forever shining within you. Palya dishvapi jagrada dishutata sarvasvavasta svapi In the states of waking, dream, and sleep, and in every stage of life. Vyavritta svanu vartamana mahamityanta spurantam sada The very same consciousness shines continually as the true self. Swatmanam prakati karoti bhajatam yo mudraya bhadraya To him who reveals the self to his devotees with his sacred gesture of wisdom. Tasmai shri guru murtaye nama idam shri dakshina murtaye To dakshina murti, God in the form of guru, salutations. With the Chin Mudra gesture, Dakshinamurti shows the identity of your individual consciousness with the all-pervasive consciousness of Brahman, the fabric of existence. Due to the power of Maya, countless forms are projected on that fabric of existence, as Shankara explains. Vishwam Pashyati Karya Karanataya Swaswami Sambandhataha The world appears as cause and effect, as master and servant. Shishya Charyataya Tateva Pitraputra Dhyatmana Bhedataha As teacher and student, as father and son, in different forms. Swapne Jagrati Vaya Esha Purusho Maya Paribhramitaha to him who sees all this while awake or dreaming due to the power of Maya. Tasmai Shri Guru Murtaye Nama Idam Shri Dakshina Murtaye. To Dakshina Murti, God in the form of Guru, salutations. 
you experience all those worldly forms due to the consciousness that dwells within you. And that consciousness is Dakshinamurti himself. So, Dakshinamurti is both the all-pervasive consciousness dwelling in every creature as well as the very fabric of existence, the underlying reality because of which everything exists, as Shankara explains. Bhuram bam syanalo nilom baramahar nato himam shuf puman Earth, water, fire, air, space, sun, moon, and consciousness. Itya bhati chara charat makamidam yasyaiva mutyashtakam. His eightfold nature appears in the form of sentient and insentient things. Nanyat kinchana vidyate vimrishatam yasmat parasmat vibho. The wise know that nothing at all exists separately from him. Tasmai Shri Guru Murtaye Nama Idam Shri Dakshina Murtaye. To him, Dakshina Murti, God in the form of Guru, salutations. Everything that exists is a manifestation of Dakshina Murti. So, you can meditate on him in any form, including the form of your own guru. Now, in the last verse of this hymn, Shankara describes the pala, the tremendous benefits you can gain from its profound teachings. Because this hymn reveals the self of all, through listening, reflecting, meditating, and reciting it, Sarvatmatva Mahavibhuti Sahidam Syadishvaratvam Swataha. You can gain liberation knowing your own consciousness as the self of all. Siddhetat Punarashtada Parinatam Chaishvaryam Avyahatam. And gain limitless freedom as well as great yogic powers. Yogic powers are said to include the ability to become as tiny as an atom or to grow to the size of a mountain. But greater than all such powers is moksha, liberation, through which you transcend all worldly suffering while alive and after death remain utterly non-separate from Brahman. With this verse, Shankara concludes the Dakshinamurti Stotram. We'll conclude here with a mantra to Dakshinamurti that's often chanted for prayer and meditation. Om Namo Bhagavate Dakshinamurtaye Om Salutations to Lord Dakshinamurti Mahyam medham pragnam prayacha swaha. Please bless me with intelligence and wisdom. Om shanti shanti shanti.